Logtarig, our friends. Hey, everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And as you guys have probably guessed, this was a deload for the first half of the week. And I uh, felt like I gained a lot of water weight the last couple of days. I had a lot of diet soda the last couple of days, and I don't normally do that. I felt bloaty, um, but when I was looking at the footage, I don't really see it on the camera. Um, so once the shirt is off for the deadlifts, I don't look any more bloated than usual. I mean, it's a lot of body fat, I have loose skin, but uh, I was surprised. I thought I'd look different. But uh, I felt a little sluggish today. Um, it was a little hard to kind of get in my groove because I haven't trained, actually trained, trained since last week. It's just been light, active recovery stuff for the most part, a lot of bands, you know, a little bit of kettlebell stuff, things like that. So it felt a little sluggish getting back into it, especially going into the heaviest wave on the speed work on the squats. Now, the deadlifting felt good once I got my hook grip set in. Deadlifting felt good. Uh, and we're going to be changing this, this gym setup coming up here soon. We're going to have much better angles. We're going to have a lot more space. Um, we'll be able to see my glute ham device, all that stuff. Uh, it should all be in there once I get it all situated. But uh, that won't be till probably next week at some point. So the speed work, it just felt a little awkward getting into my groove. And a lot of it's having to, to get to where deciding really where I want to dig that bar in. Uh, because I'm trying to find these right angles to where I get rid of that bit of thoracic uh, lean that I have on the top third of my concentric reps. All right, a lot of people will talk about that with, with my squat. They'll be like, oh, it's a good, no, it's not good morning. And guys, good morning's at the bottom. Um, I have some thoracic rounding near the very top. Now, that's arguable as to whether it's a quad weakness. It's different things going on. So, I mean, it's something I'm working on as far as strengthening certain, certain things in my body. Uh, there's different things I'm working on with it, but some of it's going to have to come to exactly how I decide to set the bar, how I decide to place my elbows. Um, there's a lot to be done with it. And, and people need to remember, that's not even an injury thing. That's a matter of, can I get 10 more pounds out of my squat? when I start getting really strong again, right? Because we're just looking at levers. Like that's actually not something you should be concerned about with injury risk. Minor things like the, the thoracic rounding that we see me do on the very top last foot of my lockout, it's not actually risky. Like you're not gonna get hurt doing that, but that could be the difference between a 550 and a 560 squat. Right, and, and that's all we're looking at is efficiency of levers. Um, so again, a lot of it's breaking down possible technique issues, a lot of it's breaking down uh, strength balance things. And you know, and, and again, I know that my quads are a weakness right now. My quads need to get stronger. And that's why some of my accessory work is geared towards that. And I feel like any thoracic weakness at this point can be corrected just with postural exercises. Um, not that you can fully correct that, because you can't. And just all the uh, accommodating resistance because it's forcing me to have to snap at the top and kind of get that last bit of pop um, at, at the lockout. So uh, just me doing all the bands and chains over time and learning to get tighter up there at the top and where to get my torso set for ideal levers from all the bands and chains over time is going gonna, is gonna to sort some of that. And the rest is going to come down to uh, getting my quads stronger. Right, and that's where the hip belt squats come in. And that's one reason I had to get the setup perfect and I had to go ahead and get the proper belt to really do it heavy so that I can get extremely strong at those hip belt squats. Because I feel like for me, they're gonna be one of the most important um, accessories. Because my hamstrings and stuff are absolutely not a weakness. Yes, I'm doing glute ham raises and things, uh, but it's very obvious that my hamstring development is, is actually pretty massive. So that's not gonna be a weak link in my squat. For me, weak link in my squat is just gonna be, um, again, upper back and quads. Now, the deadlifts went good today. I had, it took me a bit to get the hook set, and at first it was, it was kind of painful because I haven't pulled with a hook grip in a week. And so just trying to get it dialed in uh, took me a few pulls, right? It took me a few pulls. I would say till around the sixth rep, I really didn't have the hook set really where I wanted it, and then I remembered how to do it correctly. You guys will notice the rack came up on the first one, and then I remember to set the plates on it. Those plates make a big difference. 55 on each end. Because I've got over 100 pounds of band tension. That's approximately 110 pounds of band tension uh, right now. So, again, but I found that going more than that's really difficult. I will eventually even bump that up for the speed pulls. Uh, but that, that 110 is, is quite sufficient right now uh, for the speed, and especially on, on the grip work. 
So for me, I'm about to start doing a lot more grip training. I've slowly added some in, but I feel like uh, my hook grip is it's got about all the volume it can handle from a thumb skin perspective um, every week on the two days of deadlifting. So at this point, I really just need to get my grip stronger to go with it because my thumbs are toughening up just fine. I mean, they eventually get fatigued, right? My thumbs eventually start hurting from pulling, but it's because you can only handle so much hook gripping. But from here, um, I just feel like I need additional grip training. So I think what's start, going to start being my everyday thing is going to be obviously some ab work um, along with my pinch blocks. Because I like my pinch blocks. I have them. I've got two different sizes. They're a really good tool. Um, I might as well use them. And they're easy to set up and just leave. So it's like even if I have my whole weekend off from normal training, um, I can leave those pinch blocks there and just work on those. Uh, so I think between pulling with a hook grip uh, twice a week and then if I start adding in a little bit of grip work every single day, my grip will be where it needs to be. And all this accessory work um, and, the, and the deadlift variations will go ahead and bring my deadlift up. Uh, so again, a lot of my, my training is geared around the fact that I am box squatting. I'm working on the wider stance squat. The box squat carries over to the sumo deadlift. The hip belt squats carry over to the sumo deadlift. I'm just going to keep training sumo and build my sumo deadlift up. Plus, if I ever decide to go back to pulling conventional, sumo carries over to conventional extremely well. So it works out. Works out pretty nicely. Uh, but uh, I did 10 sets today. I, and today I had felt like I had to cut it off at 10 because my thumbs, that's kind of about all they could handle. I felt like I would have started really, really chafing my thumbs had I pulled more than 10. Uh, but the protocol here does call for anywhere from 10 up to as many as 20 singles, depending on what you can handle. Uh, but 10 was good for today because I think I did 12 last time, but with 5% less weight because we did a weight bump. So we go 50, 55, 60% for the speed work in the three week waves. Um, and then you run approximately 25% accommodating resistance. So I'm doing a little less than that for the speed pulls, uh, but that's okay. Uh, again, pulling against bands is, is, is a totally different beast. Although I will say pulling against bands as far as I feel like grip training. I mean, you talk about hook grip training. It's, it's just fantastic because the way those bands pull at the top, it's not the same. And anyone who's pulled against bands and then measured the band tension, when you add 100 pounds of band tension, it does not feel like 100 pounds of plates because it jerks the bar back down. And so that jerk effect it has on your grip um, it, it feels like it forces you to just dig in tighter with your grip. It's like the bar just digs further into your hands. Uh, so it's a totally different beast. So I feel like as far as grip training goes, um, all the pulling against bands is really going to help tremendously. And it is helping. I'm noticing a big difference in, in my thumb toughness uh, as a result of it. And I think as I add the additional grip work in to go with that, um, I think my grip is going to be pretty well set. So um, again, reaching my, my deadlift goals, um, I think we're going to be good. I think this is going to help a lot. Like I said, in addition to adding, uh, probably start messing with a little bit of grip work every single day. It's just a couple holes with the pinch blocks. So deadlifts went pretty good. Um, I think I've got one more set there. And then we went over to my chest supported rows. Which, uh, what I'm doing with those is just five by five. Uh, I'm going to have to talk more and more over time of why I'm selecting kind of the rep ranges and volumes that I am. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that uh, I am concerned about certain data out there as far as myofibular versus sarcoplasmic growth. There is emerging data showing you can potentially bias them slightly. Um, and normally I would say size equals strength, but there's also such thing as useless size. There could in theory be junk hypertrophy. So I need every single ounce of muscle that, that I build to give me as much strength as possible. Now, people say, well, why don't you get leaner? Why well, I'm getting leaner and I'll continue to get leaner. I mean, obviously at a certain point, if I want to be as strong as possible on pound for pound strength, we actually might even need to pay attention to the type of hypertrophy we get. Obviously body fat matters because if you're carrying five more pounds of body fat than you need to perform ideally, you know, that's five pounds of extra weight that's not helping you lift. So yeah, a lot of that will matter over time. So I'm thinking about that in terms of my training of, again, that more moderate rep range. I've kind of cut out doing anything more than tens. And for big movements, I'm not going over five. If I want to do a bunch of tens, and I am doing tens, right? We have multiple exercises I do sets of 10 with every week. Stick with smaller exercises, right? Muscles that we know are individual muscles that are possible weak links. What does that mean? 
things like delts, things like triceps, you know, maybe hamstrings, you know, glute ham raises. Uh, so again, I'm sticking with the moderate rep range. So I'm doing a lot of five by five for the big movements for accessory work and then a lot of tens for the small exercises which we didn't have any small exercises today so uh chest supported row for this and that's also come up too and i've got to remind people like why are you doing the chest supported row because i want to do as much deadlifting as i can get away with and recover and if i'm wasting lower back recovery on standing rows that's less deadlifting i can do every week and recover it's not what we want it's not ideal Right, that's not ideal. A row for me at this point is largely a bench accessory anyways. Um, then I did my hip belt squats. I think I've got these where I want them. Now, I stopped at three sets today because I really got the effect I wanted. I will eventually build this up to five by five with any given weight. And then once we get to five by five, we'll increase the weight and try to keep staying with five by five. Um, again, sticking with the moderate rep range. But now I'm reaching the depths that I want to reach. We've got the new belt. It took me the first set to kind of get the belt set where I wanted it to where it was comfortable enough to do this. But I felt like the second and third set, I really had the comfort down and the ability to reach a depth that I want to reach without the belt just chewing me apart. And some people said, why do you have the, the lifting belt on behind it? Uh, because it seems to dig into my lower back. Like I still have some discomfort from last week, uh, last Thursday where it was digging into and almost pulled some muscles up into my, my middle back uh, with that belt pulling on it. So by having the extra leather there of my lifting belt for that to, to dig into instead, um, again, it just doesn't cause me some additional discomfort and muscle pulls and things. <laughs> because again, no matter how you do these, these are tough. It feels like this exercise just kind of abuses your body in certain ways, no matter what you do, even though it's, it's funny because it's, it doesn't really compress your spine and it removes that. Um, just because you, you have such heavy weight just kind of hanging off your hips, no matter how you do it, um, it's, this is never going to be a comfortable exercise. But it's going to give me the training effect that I want. Because now, see, we're hitting depth. Now we're getting to parallel. And that's what we're shooting for. I need this to get me strong at getting parallel with that wide stance. And when I get sufficiently strong enough at this, this will give me the direct carryover that I want to my wider stance squat. And I'm learning to do it without having to balance the weight up on my back. So I can do more volume on this that I'm not having to deal with the axial loading recovery from, for the same reason we do the chest supported rows. But it will replicate training the muscles in my quads, my hips, everything else to the exact position that I want for the barbell squat. And then we think of it in terms of the sumo deadlift you're going to have direct carry over there also. So this is basically a perfect assistance movement for me. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.